the 18th chapter of the book of Yirmiyahu, Hadavar Asher Ayal Yirmiyahu Meit Adonai Lemor. The words that came to Yirmiyahu from God. No big revelation there. Kum v'yaranat ha-beit ha-yotzer v'shama ashmiacha et divarai. Go down to the house of a potter and there I will impart my words to you. It's only a few days to uh, Yom Kippur. Ki hinei kachomer b'yad ha-yotzer, right? We're going to talk about the potter. God, whose hands, right? This is presumably, right? It's a metaphor is what it's supposed to be. Why he's going to the house of a, of a potter. God is the one who forms us. So I went down to the potter's house. And he was working at the wheel. And the vessel he was making was spoiled. And sometimes it happens. Not everybody is, uh, you know, Patrick Swayze and um, Demi Moore around the, uh, in making pottery. Sometimes it doesn't come out so well. And what he would do if something got ruined, he would make another vessel. That, right, that was how the potter saw it fit, fit to make it, right? So, so once in a while, it didn't come out so well. Not every uh, piece of pottery comes out perfectly. And then God came to me and he said, And he said, House of Israel, can I not deal with you like this potter? Just like the clay is in the hands of the potter. So are you in my hands, O house of Israel. And again, what is it about the, the 12, 13 days or so from now? We've had uh, that phrase used in different ways also in the book of Yeshaya, but here the exact words that are, are used, right? We say, we acknowledge that in this book. We don't see that B'nai Yisrael <laughs> acknowledge it. Continue in verse 7, Pasuk Zion. Rega adaber al goy v'amamlacha lintosh v'lintotu At one moment, I can decree that a nation or a kingdom will be uprooted, that it will be destroyed. V'shav ha-goy ahu me'ra ato asher dibarti ala. But then if that nation, they they uh, they repent, they no longer do the wicked things that they were doing, v'nichamti ala ra asher chashavti la solo. Then I won't bring that punishment to them, right? I can very quickly. That potter might have to throw out the first vessel. It didn't work well, but God says, I know how to manipulate it to make it perfect. Think, of course, again on Yom Kippur, the book of Yonah. Yonah comes in, Odar Bayim Yom, in another 40 days, Ninveh will be destroyed. Was Ninveh destroyed? No, because of their repentance. So, right, the Jewish people, look what you can take advantage of. Continuing Pasuk 10, verse 9, And another moment I can say that this kingdom is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. But then if it doesn't listen to me, it doesn't obey me, I will change my mind concerning the good that I planned to give it. Viata. And more Nile is Yehuda v'al Yoshvei Yerushalayim lemor. And therefore, go and speak to the people of Yehuda, to the people of Yerushalayim, and say to them, Ko Amar Adonai, Hine Anochi Yotzer Alechem Rav v'Choshev Alechem Machashava, Shuvu Do Ish Midarko Araa ve'Tivu Darkechem Uma'al Alechem. Right, God says, I'm planning destruction, horrors for you. So turn back from your wicked ways, repent, go on a new path. Vi Amru No Ash. But what's going to happen? God already tells you, Mio, and it's got to be so disappointed. God brings him to the potter's house. God says to him, look at the potter. He messed up the first time. He could fix it. I could do it. I could. I don't even have to replace it. I could form it. I could fix it. Looks bad. It's going to be great. Looks great. I could make it terrible. So go tell the people to repent. But God says to him here in verse 12, they won't. They won't listen. They do what they want. We've had this phrase numerous times in the book of Yermiho that they go, Bishrirut Libi. We had it in last week's parsha also, right? We go in the willfulness of our own heart. We will decide what we want to do. We're not going down your path, God. The feel for Yermiahu here again, not only is he constantly having to give terrible messages, but even when God says to him, go and, and, and you know, maybe you can inspire them. Maybe you can push them. God says, it's not going to work. Lachain, ko Adonai shaluna bagwayim misha makela shet. Sha'arurit asta ma'od betulat Yisrael. So go and ask all the nation who's heard anything like this, how the maid in Israel has become such a terrible thing. Hayazov mitzur sadaib sheleg Lebanon. Does one, you know, does one leave Lebanon snow, the snow of Lebanon from the mountainous rocks? 
im yin tashu mayim zarim karim noslim. Does one abandon cool water flowing from afar, right? These are things you can't just give up on. Ki shechechuni ami lashab yikateru. Yet my people, they forgot me. They left me. They sacrificed to something that's nothing. They go and they offer sacrifices to nothingness. They go in their own ways in which they stumble. Instead of the ancient paths, they walk on their own roads. We're in verse 16. Shrikot olam kol over aleha Yishom b'yanid birosho. And because they go on their way, own ways, their land will become shama, will become desolation. It will be sort of laughed at and scorned. Everybody will be shocked by seeing, look at what this once was and look at what it is now. Like the eastern wind, I will scatter them before the enemy. I will look upon their back, not on their face in the day of disaster. When you look on their back, they're all going to be running away. We'll only see the back of their neck, the Oref. We won't see them from the front. They won't even put up a fight. They can't even put up a fight. They're just going to be so attacked so terribly. But what did the people say? Let's make a plot against Yirmiyahu because the Torah, the instruction could not have been lost from the, the priest and the counsel from the wise man and the words from the prophet. So let's go and strike him down. We don't want to listen to what he has to say anymore. We're hearing so many voices who are telling us just like a hundred years ago during the days of Chizkiyahu, during the days of the prophet Yeshayahu, that God saved us. This is what the priest says. This is what the wise men say. This is what the prophets say. Let's get rid of this Yirmiyahu guy. Everybody's dejected. Listen to me. Take note of what my enemies say. That's what Yirmiyahu says to God. Will you, right? Will you repay all the good, all that I've listened to you with evil? They even dug a pit for me. Remember how I stood before you. I wanted to daven to you. I wanted to plead for them, to turn your anger away from them. If you remember in just a couple past chapters, two chapters, I think four chapters ago, what did God say to Yirmiyahu? Don't pray for them. They're so wicked. I don't want to hear you. Even if Moshe and Shmuel were here two chapters ago, I would still not Repent. I would tell Moshe and Shmuel to go away. Their children should go and suffer in a famine. They'll be mowed down by sword. Let their wives be bereaved of children and husband. Let their men be struck down by plague and the young men slain in battle by the sword. It's a very harsh uh, words from Yirmiyahu here, uh, but uh, I guess he feels that his life is threatened, and therefore he, right, somebody comes to kill you, don't let that happen. Tishma za'aka, we're in verse 22, mi batehem ki kicharu shucha lilach deini ufachim tamnu liraglai. Let an outcry be heard from their houses. When all of a sudden the enemies come upon them because they've dug a pit to trap me and they've laid traps and snares at my feet. Oh God, you know all the, their plots to kill me. Don't pardon them. Don't blot out their guilt from your presence. And so right at that time of your wrath and that time of your anger, allow them to stumble, allow them to be punished. It's the challenging end of the verse here, end of this chapter where the prophets of God are supposed to come and they're supposed to defend B'nai Israel. 
We know that especially from Moshe, from Shmuel, from others. The exception to the rule was, was um, Eliyahu. But when Elio was all upset and said, I'm the only one who listens to you, God, what does Elio do? He says, God, kill me. He doesn't say, God, kill my enemies. Now, you could say he does worse than that. He proclaims a famine, that for years people are dying as a result of it. But here, Yirmiyahu, you could see the harshness, how difficult it is. He wants to help in Israel. He's tried. He's trying to give them warning. He's trying to get them to repent. And there's still the possibility. If they trust in God, if they follow the Shabbat, if they... There still is, even though it's far-fetched, a possibility of them not being destroyed and not being exiled. But instead of listening to him, what do they do? They go and they plot to kill him. They dig the grave. They're getting ready. And the Seer Miyahu doesn't have mercy for them. He was promised by God that his many of his visions will be difficult. But even though that they're difficult... He was promised by God that God would protect him. And thus here, he's asking not just for protection, but he's asking that his enemies suffer, which is, again, a very harsh thing to hear from this prophet.